Master. You once shared、yeah. that Mother Earth is the highest fourth level being who evolves with the merit that she earns by being loving and giving and by protecting all the creatures on this planet. Could we know at what spiritual level Mother Earth is right now? She's fourth, is higher four. Oh. And the sun is the fifth level being that you could see all the time, and you could even feel. <laughs> the moon also.、Uh, the moon is the third level. It's, it's kind of collective being up there, make up the moon. They all kind of high, high third level. But the sun is the fifth level. It's a beneficial being.、Uh, listen, even if the moon is just a third level or the earth is four level, but we have to be really grateful to them.、Uh, scientifically speaking, if the moon were to be out of、uh, orbit, then we cannot exist here on our planet. Even, yes,、uh, so, so our earth cannot exist or cannot have light. You see, so. Actually, the moon are also a world saver, and the sun. If the sun were not there, I don't think we can exist either. So they, these are also world saver. We also have to also thank them all. I thank them all the time. Whenever I remember, when I see the moon, I always say hello and thank you, and I love you. Thank you so much for helping us, for saving this planet. All this time, yeah, physically, physically. The the alignment between the sun, moon, and our planet and a neighboring planet they are wonderfully arranged, wonderful arrangement. Otherwise, life cannot exist on Earth here. Yeah. Yes, yes Master.、Um, is the fifth level the highest that Mother Earth can advance to, or she can go beyond? No, fifth level is where all physical being here can advance to, except when. Uh, came from a higher level, then go back to higher level.、Oh. But the mother Earth will go to the fifth maximum. Fifth level is wonderful already. My God, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs>、um, yeah. As Mother Earth's spiritual level advances, how does it affect the planet Earth's inhabitants? We affect her, not she affects us. <laughs>、oh. She will always be the same, loving,、uh, sacrificing, supporting, and caring all the time. Fourth or fifth level, same. It's just that we are the one who abuse her loving kindness to the、uh, extent of,、uh, you know, like、uh, damaging ourselves physically and spiritually. We are the one who has to change. She won't change anything. I see. Thank you, Master. You're welcome, my love. The strong chemical and pesticide they use for agriculture, which is not really necessary if we do it the normal way, the natural way. We don't even need pesticide or insecticide at all. And they cannot bear all this. It's too much for them. Even humans sometimes we eat the the food full of、uh, insecticide or pesticide. We also feel sick, no? Over the long period of time. But because we are big, so the sickness is not very、uh, grave. So we do not、uh, feel it right away. But over the time, it ruins our body function and damages the cells and all kind of things. Make us sick. Sometimes we get sick right away, but most of the time, because we are big, so we can、uh, kind of ingest it and and some other way to clean it out. But then after. Too long. We also cannot bear it. But、uh, also many cakes and cookie, and that's already better. Some they don't have any、uh, any ingredient, you know. And、uh, sometimes uh, my uh, helper just presume that it's okay because last time he bought an apple pie, it was no egg. So this is an apple pie. It must be the same. <laughs> so this, you know, but it's a different name. And I don't know why they put egg in the apple pie for. <laughs> the recipe I know doesn't need any egg. <laughs> yeah, for example, like that. So you gotta be really careful, huh?、Mm, rather not not eat, yeah, than eat something wrong. But you know right away. You know, if you eat something wrong, you feel t-、uh, stomach upset. Or you have headache. Or you meditate that day, lousy, lousy, lousy. You feel empty. You feel 
like rigid. You don't feel like relaxed. You know, you feel your body is, uh, uh, I don't know. The body is a little different even, the body. Yeah? Feel rigid, it feels uncomfortable. It doesn't feel like, you know, loose and, you know, uh, easy and smooth. Yeah? This is the thing. You feel like your, your, your feeling is not as sharp, not as deep. No? Yeah. Something is wrong, it's just, you just don't know what. Yeah. That is what? <laughs> That's the EG, or maybe the, <laughs> maybe the Y-O-R-K, you know? Uh, these are the things. Because it's not much, um, it's not only it's just about the meat and the toxin in it, or the egg and the, the, the you know, the poison in it, but it's the feeling of the, the animal, you know, that uh, produce these things. Hmm. The way they kill them, or the way the chicken has been raised in such a small confinement to force to lay eggs. Just eat and lay egg, eat and lay egg, you know. Thing like so it's nothing in there for you. It's all negative, bad feeling, sadness, sorrow, emptiness, you know, meaningless. So you eat these things, you suddenly also feel so meaningless. Your body suddenly is not... It's not the, 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 the how na- fruitful body, it feels so dry or so hard or something, rigid. Yeah, that is definitely the food. Yeah, the body is very easy to tell. No need to sit in meditation to feel anything. Yeah, that's, oh, this life, so difficult. No? So difficult. Yeah? Hello. Hello. I'm a Buddhist teacher. 但我修观音法门以后还是继续修啊 你就看到一个那个那个很圆的那种隧道是吗？还是风雨？啊哈，这个地方我这儿出了一大洞。啊哈，然后这一串一串东西往外跑。啊，那个是灵魂出去跑到比较高一点的境界去了，人家死亡
，还能够爬到那边已经了不起了，恭喜 ，OK。我觉得这都是师傅，全是师傅的帮忙，我知道，我感恩师傅，非常感恩，不客气。<笑>记得以前师傅讲那个故事，有一个人很有爱心嘛，他他跟他师傅说：“你带我去地狱看看嘛，啊，啊，他师傅带他去地狱看，那看到一个小孩在那边被刑罚了，太太难过，太痛苦了，他就跟他师傅说：“救他嘛，啊，他师傅说不要救了，他那个人还没成熟了，一说还没有洗干净嘛，第一就是那种。”把我们那个坏的那个瓶子都洗掉，跟医生开刀一样，把那个癌症拿出来，看起来是很痛苦，不过以后会好。嗯，那个太坏的人就应该去地狱那边这样子，才能够洗净，然后他的灵魂才能够自由。当然很痛苦啊，不过没有别的办法。他师傅就是不能救那个人了，不要了，那个人拼命的要救。好，他师傅就给他准了。他就带上来，当他的小孩嘛。以后哇，这个人天不怕地不<笑>地不怕的，然后这边搞他的生活跟地狱一样，还有伤害很多人，有人死不能嘛。就告诉你们过了，修行的人真很辛苦，这个世界要修已经很辛苦了。嗯，还有很多那种障碍让我们更辛苦，所以你们能修，我高兴啊。啊。Master, in our previous conference, you had used the term zero pain food. Is this、uh, the same as karmaless food, or is it a different kind of food? Oh, karmaless, karmaless. Karmaless food. Yes, it's not because of bad karma, but because you consider about the pain of the plants and the food that you eat, so you try to minimize it.、Huh? Yes, master. Whether or not you will get bad karma or not get bad karma, the main point is that you don't want to eat the food that causes pain. Okay? Yes, master. The least pain possible, because you love, because of your love, because of your compassion. The higher you go, the less you want to cause any discomfort to anyone,、uh, be it the moving beings or non-moving beings. That's the main point.、Hmm? Not about karma even. But even then, karma less or karma for you must always be thankful for all the creation of this、uh, food that you eat, and thank all the plants and the fairies and the angels who take care of them to make them grow and give you taste and give you energy, give you enjoyment. Always thank heavens and earth and all in between and humans and fairies and heaven. Before you partake of the food, yes, really thank you. If we want to live long or live forever, we could uh, uh, stay between the border of astral level and physical level. I mean, back and forth, back and forth. We jump、uh, like a border, you know.、Uh, okay. I don't know how to explain this. There is a threshold between the astral level. Which is invisible body. Yeah, after you so-called die, your physical body disintegrate, but you have another body. It look exactly like your body right now. It just、uh, more beautiful. Yeah, more useful and doesn't go old. Yes, and perfect condition. For example,、uh, you you lost your arm, one arm here. Yeah. Or your nose is a、uh, sweet tit on one side like this, huh? Yeah. But after you leave this physical body,、uh, you have the same arm like before. Your nose is straight in、uh, in the in the middle here, yeah. And、uh, your whole body is perfect,、uh, just like、uh, the day you were born, huh? Yes. Well, some people are born with defect, but what I mean is when you were born perfect. Then,、uh, when you leave the physical body and enter the astral body, your body is perfect, and you will not feel immediately the difference between your astral body and the physical body that you have left behind. Except that you saw that, hey, how come it looked like me laying in there, and who are me here? You know, the people who do not practice the、uh, the Tao, yeah, 
the path of enlightenment, uh, like for example, Kuan Yin method, now, when they die, uh, some of them get very confused, thinking, oh, maybe they are still alive, I mean, still in physical body. That's why some ghosts, so-called ghosts, linger uh, next to the physical body or, or inside the house that they used to live, trying to get back the possession of whatever they have left, you know, like in the house, yeah? So sometimes if somebody go in their house and use their stuff, you know, they get angry, sometimes they throw tantrum, and if they're strong enough, they even manifest themselves into a physical body for a few seconds or a few minutes and scare in the whole household, you know, and everybody goes screaming out, ah, there's a ghost, there's a ghost. <laughs> yeah, and that happens, okay? That happens. Uh, or they came back and, you know, uh, even though they cannot manifest into a visible uh, body, they, they would make trouble, you know. They try to throw out things in the house or rattle the doors or uh, move in the chairs and uh, break in the furniture and the ball and the plates and all that or uh, rattling the cooking pot and all that make a lot of noise and scare people, yes. Because they are still very confused. How come nobody hear them? How come nobody talk to them? No, how come, how come his wife is already kissing somebody else? Yeah, this is a terrible <laughs> for him, yeah? Okay. And because they don't have the physical body anymore, they are uh, very uh, sensitive to all the feelings of the people around them. They can travel fast from one uh, city to the next, you know, in a few seconds or in no time at all. And for them, space and time means nothing much. So they can appear anywhere very quickly. And also, they can see everything. You see? They can feel everything. Like if you're crying for them, they feel very sorrowful. Yeah? For example, if the husband just died and the whole house is still crying uh, for him, yeah? The wife or the children uh, and all that, they're crying or even not crying. Uh, their heart feel well, broken because husband just died, father just died, and this uh, non-practitioner soul will hang around them and trying to hug them, comfort them, and talk to them, saying, I'm still here, I'm still here. But uh, the family member cannot hear them. Well, some people hear, yeah, some family member can see them. Uh, I mean, this is rare, yeah, it's rare, but it happened. So they were very, very uh, frustrated and confused. So they just uh, feel very, very sad and suffering and they don't understand what's going on because they still feel like when they were still in the physical body and they don't understand why everything is so changed. And nobody would talk to them and nobody would even recognize they're standing nearby or hugging them. Just ignore them completely like that. For them it is very confusing and frustrating. Uh, so most people, when they talk about immortality, they think in that way. They think, okay, I live forever in this physical body. But it's not always the case, yes? Uh, we the practitioner, if we have to go, we go, yeah? We have seen many better uh, planets, yeah? Better level of heaven uh, during meditation. We wish to leave this physical body and go there as soon as possible. So it's no, no problem to us, we all prepare, yeah? And we will not linger to this uh, physical uh, planet. If we are high-level practitioners, we know there are better places to go, fine. Mm. Some people are not yet uh, on a high level, of course, they still are very attached to this physical planet. But uh, the people who do not practice, you know, when they die, they're confused like that, yeah? Okay. Uh, should we avoid genetically manipulated food and vegetable? Because oh. this may be a, an unplanned interfer human interference in God's plans. Uh, what did they do? Well, I'm not a gene, <laughs> gene scientist, so in detail I don't know, but the principle is that you change the genetic code in order to make vegetable more resistant against uh, yeah, against insects. Uh, insects, for example. That's one example, or to, to be a more uh, fruit, like rice, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are against it. 
Yes. Mm. Do you know the reason why? A lot uh, of people protest, you know, even <laughs> Prince Charles and <laughs> many people against that. Does anybody know why? So that everyone can understand why. Uh, I think the reason is that uh, it, uh, many believe that it interferes with, uh, with uh, God's uh, plans and nature. Mm -hmm. That's it? And it poses some risk, uh, some health risk, which we don't know at the moment. Like what? Like that uh, we, when we eat this, then our own genetic code may be altered. Uh, get some altered or get some influence from that. Uh -huh. What did they do to alter the code of the vegetable? Do you know, by the way? Anybody know? Okay. You want to answer this? No, what no, did they do? no I wait for the okay. sister. Yeah. What I know about genetically modified food is that they're doing, they're actually splicing DNA cells and they can actually now splice animal DNA cells into, into the food. food. That's what, that's what so people that's don't like. So that's part of the problem, yeah. um, is that vegetarians won't even know if they're eating something yes. that has animal yes, 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 in it. Yes, 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 yes. That's what people protested, yes. And the other thing is that they haven't done enough testing and that they're finding some of the things that they've uh, put into, say, corn, for instance, to protect it from corn uh, bulls, I think they are those, uh, an, an insect that attacks corn. Well, what's happening now is that when the corn pollinates, the monarch butterflies, which are maybe miles away, but the pollination from the corn plants with this insect poison in it are eating um, other plants that have, they're collecting the pollen off of um, other types of plants that have corn pollen on it and they're dying by the yes, thousands. Yes, yes. So they, it hasn't been tested enough and there's too yes, many yes. repercussions. Mm -hmm. The, uh, that's what I thought. Anything else, honey? I think, I think she said it all. Uh -huh. Anything else? Anything else you need to let us know? Um, sometimes the modified plants, they also um, mix with the normal plants and then the whole crop changes and maybe there will be no more normal plants of this kind. They, <laughs> if the modified plants um, mix the pollen, then the normal, more normal plants yeah. as well as yes, yes. And one time I heard that they tried it with some modified, um, I think, soya beans or something, and actually the crop they got was less yeah. <laughs> than ordinary, and many plants died, and it even kind of poisoned the soil. Yes, yes, yes. And they inf infest the neighboring miles away uh, farm. Yeah. And, and they're breeding the seeds so that the seeds will not reproduce. So that, so that um, every, every year you can't go out and take the seeds from your crop and replant them. The seeds terminate after one year so that they're, they're only good for one year. And they're, um, they're patenting the seeds so that the seeds are no longer owned by you. They're owned by the corporations that have the patents on the Patent genetic right. mo Even. modified food. My goodness. Yes, you want to say something more. And I also heard that um, they kill the insects, that, like the ones that are damaging, but, they, the, but sometimes they kill all kinds of good insects mm -hmm. too, or even birds, yes. and it's not controllable. What do you think is the, the damage caused by uh, the genetic modified vegetable? So, from, from what we have heard now, you think, why people protest? Well, from the vegetarian point of view, it's mainly these uh, animal cells which uh, get yes. into the plants. Yeah. I, I have a question for the sister. Yeah. Now, if the corn were genetically identical, wouldn't that be more prone to diseases if they were grown in masses? Wouldn't, wouldn't they be more prone to diseases? If I missed the first part of If the every question. crop were to be identical, wouldn't each crop be more prone to a disease? Actually, they've, they've done some research on that many years ago, back in the 40s, when they were first starting to do um, like pesticides and herbicides, they had one field that um, had been, they'd been growing pesticide-induced um, crops, and one field that was pure organic, and they tested seeds that were organic seeds and then inorganic seeds, and the, the seeds planted in organic soil 
did much, much better than any of the others. And right after that, they had like a huge swarm of something like locusts or something like that. And the organic seeds and the organic soil w had the, a much higher survival rate than any of the other, um, you know, ones with pesticides or herbicides or, or any, any sorts of additives. And so the strongest, healthiest plant is the one that's, it's, that's grown from an organic seed in organic soil. I mean, naturally grown. Mm. Yeah, that's for the test. Actually, I have grown some organic in, in Mali, and it's eaten all by the worms. <laughs> we go, we don't spray anything. <laughs> yeah, we eat with them too, you know, whatever left over, but it's not much. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, yeah, actually, we survive up to now without any genetic uh, food, so I don't know why. But you see, because most people out there, they are not vegetarian also, you see? So they see in the point of profit, yes. And they also argue that if they grow genetically modified food, they will have a lot more food and the, the hungry people will be fed. Theoretically speaking, maybe it, it sounds good, but we have not tested far enough to know how beneficial or how damaging can that be? But the point is, if uh, they uh, ingest them with a, uh, with a, uh, animal uh, DNA, then uh, we should not uh, eat them. Yeah, we should not eat them to begin with. Yeah, we just find those uh, normal food to eat. Yeah, but luckily, a lot of farmers and uh, governments uh, um, representative they're against it. I think that I read an article where the governments are very afraid of world hunger. And right now, if you project out, you know, the, the birth rate and the available soil and, and all that, it, it looks like there's going to be world hunger in a number of years. But the article noted that, you know, again, the same arguments that, you know, it takes like between 9 and 30 pounds of grain to feed one, make one pound of beef. And so if, if we switch to, yeah, uh, if we switch to a vegetarian diet, then those arguments go away. That's the best. That's the best. Everybody knows that. I mean, a lot of people know that. Not everybody knows that. And some people ignore it. But that's the fact, that we waste so much food and grain and water and medicine and time and energy and manpower just to cultivate uh, animal meat. Whereas if we just eat whatever that there already without having to use that to feed the animals, then we have enough to feed everybody. We should never have any hunger in this planet. We have more than enough. Before we even discuss genetic food, we are already fully fed. If we really are cooperating and, and, and are more selfless, just like uh, beings in many other planets. Other planets, they don't have hunger because they share. They never think anything that truly belongs to them. Yeah, they just take care of it. Yeah. But since the modified food, do you think the world has become less hungry or not? Let's say you, if uh -huh. you grow an apples, you could probably get an organic, you probably get a hundred apples a day. Mm. If you do using a modified apple, a thousand, yeah. you get probably a thousand. So that's the price a lot cheaper and a lot more produced. Are you sure? Has it been cheaper anywhere? Well, actually, actually, the productivity per land has been increasing ever since they started doing things like pesticides and, and, and everything like that, and the productivity per land kept going up. But now we're reaching the point of diminishing returns where the productivity is starting to go down, and that's where they're starting to bring in the genetically modified food. However, some research from Rutgers University shows that they went to a supermarket and they bought a whole bunch of vegetables and then they went to an organic supermarket and bought them and the organic food had between 50 and 80 percent more nutrients and so you may be getting more apples but the the value the minerals and the vitamins that you get in an organic apple more than outweighs the cost ah pro and con exactly mm, okay so she so mean even though you even if you can buy it cheaper, uh, you pay for uh, less, you know, more empty apple. <laughs> yeah, you pay less, but you get less anyway, or maybe even less than the, the, the value that you pay for. All right, so at the end we lose. We lose out to nature.
Ah, bravo God, you are the best, you do everything correctly. <laughs> Whatever we try to outdo you is not too good. So you mean all this uh, um, DNA, uh, whatever DNA food is no good anyway, empty. Yeah, just have a bigger <laughs> contain, a container, but nothing inside. Yeah, like properly. like tomatoes have been bred to be uniform size, color, and oh. long shelf life. How boring! But yeah. but not to have uh, nutrient value. Oh, they have research, and there's no nutrient value. Well, they they've bred them, maximized them, so that they'll have uh, long shelf life, and and it's taken a sacrifice in the nutrient value. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I know somebody who works in a restaurant, and uh, they commented recently that they don't know why, but the last year or so, everyone's been asking for aspirins. Yeah. Everyone's been having headaches all the yeah. time. People she works with and everything. Because sometimes the effect. Uh, of uh, love devoid in food is not so physically and it's not so obvious. You would think, oh, you have a headache, or you think you have a dizziness, or you feel vomiting. But it might be somewhere, yeah? They might think, okay, it's pollution, I overwork, I don't sleep, or anything we do, because headache people often have, they don't think about it. But some of our brothers and sisters, we switch to organic, and we feel a lot better since cool. we did Yeah, it. I believe you. And we even meditate better. I, I can yes. feel the difference if I eat really very pure food. I can sit more still. Sometimes yes. I get agitated when I eat food that's not very good for me. Right, right. It's true. That that I can, that I can. Uh, uh, how you say? Um, hmm? Confirm with you. Yes. A lot of time when I go on the airplane, I just cannot eat anything. If some people in the kitchen, if they love their job. They do it devotedly and with love to to offer things to people. The food tastes better. Yeah. So sometimes the same person cook with a different mood, I also feel different. Yeah. I think it's also important to have things that are really fresh. Because I, I learned that if, for example, flour, if it's very fresh, just ground, it's much more nutritious even if you just keep it for a few hours. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, in India, for example, when I, I taste the chapati there, it tastes better than here because they ground it with the stone kind of uh, uh, grinder. Huh? What is it? Mortar. And they, they do it every day or maybe just for every couple of days. They don't do it a big, big a lot. They do it at home, you know, <laughs> and just a little, little quantity, enough for one or two days or one or two meals. Yeah, and it tastes like heaven. Uh, also in Italy, for example, it's spaghetti there. It tastes different than I eat uh, here in any hut at all, <laughs> in any, any pizza restaurant. It tastes different. Rarely you can find some good one. In Singapore, that is a different, yeah. In Singapore, I had, um, I had one favorite restaurant. Sometimes I went there to eat uh, pizza. Sometimes I could eat one, two or three pizza. No, the thin one. They call margarita, very thin and small. But it's so nice, and I ask, I, I don't know why it's the same looking like in other restaurants don't taste so good anymore, don't taste so good. So I ask them, uh, what's, uh, what do you do with the pizza? How do you do it? They say, oh, we don't have this pizza today. Uh, I say, why is that? They say, because the flour didn't come yet. They imported the flour from Italy, the one that, that is good, that, that place is good. That's why the, the quality is always the same. It's not just like anything. Maybe in that, that reason they grow organic flour or it's especially good in that region. So they just keep shipping it in. And if they don't have flour, they don't make, chip, <laughs> chip, uh, they don't make uh, that uh, margarita uh, pizza. Yeah, that's how I find out. Oh, it, it has to be different. It has a little different. And when I was in Germany, I was married, yeah? Um, my ex-husband and I, we grow tomatoes, and the tomato just crawling on the, on the ground because there's so many, many fruit, so much he crawl on the ground, he cannot stand no more. <laughs> we give him a lot of legs, but he's still crawling there. So much food, and it tastes so good. And when I was younger, as a kid, I grow also vegetable for fun, you know, I grow tomato and all that, and it tastes also so good. I hardly can find such a tasty tomato anymore. Even though now they grow bigger than my potato, tomato, but don't taste so good. It's, there's no fragrance. I don't know. 
There is something in a tomato that makes you like it so much, and some old tomato it tastes just like water. Mm. So it could be the organic and the love they put into it, yeah? So you be careful what you eat, guys. It affects your meditation also, mm? according to experience. <laughs>那個人生好像有一點那個蜜血的那種能力。我是他們抹最討厭黃色,因為是頭。那你們想啊,頭啊,就轉那種衣服啊,如果找抹的人就轉那個哈,還有打坐的時候就往南方的打坐。誒?
，哇，这样从来都是这样子，所以自古以来他们那个那个和尚啊，都穿那个黄色的衣服的。哎哎，不过因为释迦牟尼佛来了以后，他就跟呢他们徒弟说，呃，那个没关系啦。啊，你们那个国家风俗习惯不一样，那、啊、去哪一国就应该呃跟那些国家的人配合啊啊，穿那边的衣服等等啊。所以从那个时候，人每一个国家那个释迦牟尼佛徒弟出去，叫就穿变变形了，就变不同的衣服啦啊。到西藏就变红色的，啊，剩下一点黄黄的呵呵上面的，然后到中国就变了黑的，啊，然后呃，切多一点就变蓝色的。然后等一下要多一点，要多这个大和尚就可以装黄袍的，等等。哎呀，世上黄黄黄色为了要避邪而已，不是说应该修行的很高才得到那个衣服。后来大家修越来越越越越差嘛，那我是着这衣服那里呀、啊，说我还要当和尚怎么才能装黄袍啊？现在呢，很多地方是这样的，你刚进来的话，装黑。啊，然后擦开一点，你就穿蓝色了。啊，然后擦开一点，然后咖啡色了。我不是是本来就黑了，然后上来一点点就咖啡色了，然后上来一点就蓝色了。然后当什么上桌那种那那种那种地位，还才能够装黄袍的黄色的衣服等等。就我刚修的时候，因为我刚碰到我那个我在德国碰到几个那个那个什么啊，佛教的女和尚男和尚啊，然后。呃，他呢？我说，哎呀，穿你的衣服蛮漂亮啊，啊，还进床啊，啊，接给我穿看看。<笑>我的那个女的，那个师傅，嘿，不用乱讲。你，不能穿我们的衣服啊,啊，这个衣服啊，你要做修多久人家能穿吗？你就这样吧。啊<笑>这个白那衣啊，也在台湾才能够成佛那么快，在越南成不了。因<笑>为女孩子啊，整个背子啊，又装不了那个白那衣啊。它有几条啊，有界限啊。你刚修的话有两条而已，你懂吗？修几年以后就四条，如果是这样，然后六条什么啊，没一大堆的。老外国说屁股要下来，不是要上去，那个还要有规矩。这个很麻烦，我我学不了,了。比方说这样的哈，那后来就变成这个这个是规矩，这个衣服的事情啊。以前没有这样的，以前刚刚出家的时候啊，释迦牟尼佛都教他们男女的全部都要蓝衣服的，不可能穿白色的衣服。后来很多人又去去别的国家弘法嘛，嗯，然后他说好了没关系啊，去人家别的国家，人家不穿跟我们这样，穿了会觉觉得怪怪。哎，他们回去回来又报告释迦牟尼佛说：“我们穿这个黄色的衣服出去，人家觉得我们怪怪啊，他们不听啊，啊，头发又光秃秃的，然后，然后衣服又黄黄的，人家看我们的怪物，一看他跑掉，一看他跑掉。所以释迦牟尼佛就说啊，没关系，衣服是属于那个国家的风俗习惯啊。事实上，因为他们修行久了以后，穿黄色不穿黄色都无所谓啊，他们理念足够了。”所以不用避邪什么，所以释迦牟尼佛说无所谓嘛。然后去弘法的时候，就有人说 OK 啦，就可以穿什么衣服都可以，就是 OK 啦。后来我们都执着那些衣服啊，我才那么麻烦啊。光学那个衣服的颜色，还有那个那个那个什么铺的条，哦，那个已经好几年了，哈哈哈没时间学别的东西啊，我打坐什么也很困难的，嗯。站在西藏的那个。那个打桌的地方里面，那女孩子不能进去。那个寺庙里面都是男孩子坐的。有一次我不知道，我跑到里面坐。<笑><笑>哦，为那些和尚。哈哈哈哈哈哈哈！我听不懂释迦牟尼佛。手脚语言了，<笑>我就懂了。我那个时候，我就指那个我那个那个脚啊，因为那个我打字我麻掉了。<笑>
我说等一下，我停那个表，我说五分钟我就走了。<笑>哎呀，这语言不通很麻烦。<笑>嗯、既然修行的人，怎么还要用语言麻烦<笑> ？OK， 我来了。You know why people like the round moon so much? Because it's like your perfection, eh? Yes. And today is the moon as the fullest, fullest of the whole year. So people in China, they're waiting the whole year for this day to eat the cake. <laughs> Normally, we should sit outside, you know, looking at the moon, yeah, uh, enjoying the flowers, the fragrance, and eat the cakes and drink tea, yeah. And we still can do that, yes? Uh, the moon is still not completely gone, huh? Is it still there? Yeah. Okay. So after you eat the cake, then you go out and look at the moon. <laughs> huh? It's too late now to go out and look at the moon, right? Yes. But never mind, you have the moon inside, huh? When you meditate, you see the moon sometimes, yes? Yeah, the moon sometimes. A half moon, eh? Mm -hmm. In some tradition, people say that if you see the, the new moon, you know? The new moon is only like this kind of shape, huh? Half of the brown shape. And if you see the, the new moon, you can make a wish and your wish will come true. Be careful what you wish, okay? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they mean the outside moon or they mean the inside moon that when we meditate, we get, or we see, yes? Uh, in some level, you know, right? Yes. At the third level, we would see the moon, yes? In uh, some tradition, like Muslim tradition, you see the Ramadan, yes. Actually, it is said that you should not eat until you see the moon. Yes, yeah, so you meditate, 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 until one of, of them see the moon at least, and then they celebrate. Well, <laughs> if, if I adhere to this tradition and make you sit and sit, <laughs> meditate until one of you see the moon, then we can eat the cake, then I think <laughs> I think we never have the cake. I will eat them all by myself. <laughs> Lucky for you, I don't like to get fat, yes? So you see the moon, or you see the star, I don't care. <laughs> I give it all to you to eat, huh? And you lucky people, no? Yes. Yeah, lucky.